Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy, and today we're going to be diving into a VOD review with TTV going up against the Tamagotchi crew. This is from today's Victory Road $500 final. I'm not sure if it had, I think they call their tournaments Clash. So Victory Road, shout out to them for throwing another event. And we're going to be watching the perspective of Indie Bear. So I have the Twitch VOD um, paused right now. We're going to see the two teams. So Tamagotchi crew is going to be chaotic on Talonflame Jungle. Pikachu on Slash King on Pikachu in the bot lane with Momo on Eldegoss and Egg Morning on Snorlax. So Egg Clan Tamagotchi crew with uh, Hiroki on the Lucario top lane. So they have the Snorlax tri lane, whereas TTV has their typical tri lane with the Pikachu and the Eldegoss with the Wiggly tri lane. Dragonite for the jungle pick. So that's cool. I think Toon's been playing a little bit more Dragonite and then Utano on the Lucario. And he's going to be the only slow smoker on their team. And, uh, the Tamagotchi crew has three slow smokes. Well, Let's dive in. I knew it just dropped. I mean, we'll see how it's going, bro. Let's dive in. This is game three of the grand finals, so TTV is currently leading two to zero. And we'll be watching that tri lane action, kind of breaking down how the tri lane works a little bit, paying, paying attention to it. A lot of these games are very reactionary. All right, they hit their second. <laughs> They're going to go ahead and burn these, it looks like. So not in a hurry to rush as they get there just on time. They do have the big forward slow smoke. Looks like Zug or Goof got that one. I'm not sure which one. Probably Goof. So they secure the farm. Very good at doing so. Now they're playing aggressive in the tri lane. The Snorlax is a little low. They do have that nice heal coming out. They almost got it, but just playing the A-trades. A-trading, of course, in reference to, like, pressing the A button uh, to attack your enemies. All right, and they get their farm. Nice and simple early game. They're going to go ahead and catch up some of this back uh, back XP now. Try to get into the Leaf Tornado if they can. So a little bit of min-maxing here. There you go. All right, so they have their level fours. Probably in the top push, the last time. 850 bees are spawned, so they're postured for that. That's the slow smoke coming out again. Those bees are super fast, come out really fast. Looks like the enemy Pikachu's been doing good at farming too. Oh, almost a kill, almost a kill. But now they have the neutral up. Has to be a jungler. I feel like this is quality's not doing me a, a solid. All right, LD is peeling back to try to help the invade. So the chaotic invade. You know, really, really dangerous to invade in tournament setting. The communication is really high there, so now that's going to guarantee that Toon is in the lead jungle-wise. So experience-wise, Toon's going to have that lead pretty consistently throughout this game. Should. You can see Toon is doing a little bit of jungle invading on the crab, but he'll probably not be able to do crazy stuff. His entire right side's up. The Talon's going to be out of jungle soon, though. Oh, he's so lucky. Good old 2v2 happening in the top lane, more or less. It's basically a 2v2 across the top lane and jungle. The way that it plays out. Yeah, I suppose don't, top don't tell me, don't tell me. I was sitting mid, so I don't think the town walked past this. Yeah, yeah. And now we're just chilling. 720 is coming up soon, so people are just posturing, looking for vision, getting some of their farm. Utano's got the jungler on him. He may need some help. He may be able to help him. A little bit of help. Throws out the heal there. I'm assuming Indie Bear is running Muscle, EXP, Share, and Buddy Barrier. So a little bit of, you know, A, a press pressure. That's how you help do a little bit more damage on the LD. Least Tornado to maybe snipe. Nice. I think he got that. I think he did. I'm not sure. Either way, they have the Dragonite at 8, which I'm assuming is going to be a Hyper Beam Dragonite because I see the Dragon Dances. Yeah, so he's just going to stack the Dragon Dances and they can just flip this because the other team still doesn't have it. So they can still just auto force. And if they stay in the lead, boom, there it is. They can auto force. They already had the lead. So I think, um, you know, playing against something like this, the enemy team would have to like hard force a fight. But even in an early fight against a Dragonite, probably pretty hard to deal with. So Dragonite is probably going to consistently hold a decent spot in the meta. Which I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case with how much Cinder was being played recently. But yeah, they hold on to that Dragonite secure and just, you know, why not, right? Why not? Oh, 
they get control of top Rotom. I didn't even pay attention to that because usually that's not what happens. But they get control of Rotom and they actually crash it, so he can get this lower. Nice. He'll probably overdunk that. He might as well. They're playing super aggressive in their jungle. No, no overdunk. Oh, they're gonna get a little bit more farm out of it. He can probably get the five in. Okay, he's just getting the full dunk in. All right, full overdunk. What's that? Twenty nine points. 29 point overdunk. It's pup, pup, um, post combat with, uh, with slow smoke, I mean. So that's, uh, just to take note of what Lutano's playing. They're farming. All right, he's breaking with the 38 overdunk. Huge. Nice shield there to give to the score shield. They're getting these, uh, 550Bs, which were neutral spawned. And Indy Bear, I like paying attention to how Indy plays because if you look at what he's doing, he's floating a lot. He floats a lot around the map. He's constantly playing for vision. This game doesn't have a, a typical thing that other MOBAs have, which are called wards or any kind of vision control. So the only way you get vision in this game is by physically moving and seeing things around the map. And I feel like Indy plays a lot for vision himself. Like Eldegoss is very self-sufficient. He's running the... Um, the eject button he's got cotton garden leaf tornado like indy can move around the map pretty comfortably second dread's going to be coming up and they're already postured for it so they're just going to be trying to you know keep momentum and stay on top of having the dread and here and the enemy team is looking either for a steal that's a brave bird aerial ace uh, talon but they can't it would have to be such a pinpoint steal for a brave bird aerial ace to take it and also they have the dragonite for the hard secure so they they hard push top for trades, which is good. The Dragonite scores in the bottom lane, Toon scores in the bottom lane. Um, at this point, the thing is, is that like, if the other team doesn't contest them at something, they're not really going to get catch up experience from uh, knockouts, from KOs, and I don't know if they're going to be strong enough for the end of the game, which is probably going to be the case. Like, they're probably just not going to be able to keep up experience wise, level wise, um, plus ability wise, to be able to contest and fight them. Because I think it, it seems like, you know, one level difference for stats and plus abilities is really a, a pretty big difference. All right, speeding up the Rotom. I like that. Just because it adds pressure. Going to see if he can push him off. He tried. He tried. He was almost able to push him off. And they'll probably just rotate out here. Like, they'll just, he's literally just going to just walk away, probably. Actually, Latano's just so strong. Oh, my gosh. They're so, so, like, so much stronger. Yeah, they'll take two kills, they'll back up. I think this is the first time I've seen Indy even go to base. Like, he's just been walking around the whole time, now that I think about it. They're just so, so far ahead. He'll farm for his ult, he's got time. He's soon. Yeah, we're just chilling. Just chilling. I think second dread is a really big opportunity for teams to come back. And I feel like the other team maybe didn't take that. Which, I mean, if you're already behind, like, you're behind, right? It's hard, but... Trading for the turn-in, I don't think equals enough experience. I'm not sure. But they're postured for Dread. They're stealing what farm they can. Indy will get this and put his ult closer, and he'll tick into his ult. Some more crabs will probably spawn in the mid. You can hear their call-outs, they're just calling out the players. Toon's just flipping the objective while they play position, because he's Dragonite. Alright, they get that, they have the 8% shield. Which is just nice, right? Like, you have an extra shield going into the end game. Can't complain about that. And Toon's going for... Buffs. Buffs on Toon. Just calling position. Huge lead, so it's over 100 score lead. They're just playing a really aggressive for position. But Holding choke. Taking some secret positioning. I think he's like on the beach or something. Have we scored enough to? Uh... I don't have any money on me, but there's a lot of money on top. Yeah, I know. I can go and they're just waiting. The other team's probably just farming some extra levels. Okay, so Talon scores. Latano tries to mirror the score, which he probably won't get. Talon didn't score either. Actually, they just forced... Yep, you can hear Indy. He knows he has to ult just to stay alive. 
They're forcing flip. They lose it. See what they can kill here. Can't kill the Aldi. They do have the Wiggly ult, so they can do big score shield plays on home goal for whoever has it. They had over 100 lead, but depending on how many of them scored, at least two of them. That's probably enough. Oh, he didn't get that in. They didn't score that much. I think they only scored like 100 or 200, so they're probably just still winning. He's got enough time to get this in if nobody stops him. He gets this in and the Pika in. Oh yeah, they're fine. They're fine. GG's. GG's, GG's. Yeah, they scored a bunch more there. That was an interesting game. I feel like the um, Tamagotchi crew, I feel like they played just a little too passive against them. Like I feel like they need to be more willing to try to flip the game on its head as opposed to just trying to keep things real neutral and passive and just try to catch up. Um, but they never really got into good fights. They never really got into much. And TTV just, just an it's a really simple way of playing the game, I think. They, they get a lead and they hold it and then they just start suffocating the rest of the game. They steal a bunch of farm. They force fights whenever they feel like they, they need to. Um, they force Dreadnaws with the, with the Dragonite secure. It's just like a really simple, clean way of playing the game as long as they don't lose early. So uh, good job to them. I like watching Indy's perspective because he, he tends to see a whole lot of the map. And also you can see how he just positions for vision and he's looking around and he is like dynamically doing what needs to be done. So 3-0 win. Congratulations to TTV as always. Um, pretty much the best team in the game. Like almost, I mean, I think it's pretty undisputed best team in the game more or less. And uh, yeah, there you have it. As always, friends, thank you so much for watching. Drop a like on the video if you wouldn't mind. Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this kind of just clean, cool, calm, and collected style of composed uh, competitive gameplay. It's really, it's almost bizarre. <laughs> it's almost bizarre how good and like clean this all turns out to be. But as always, be sure to be kind to one another. Tell someone that you love them, and I'll see you on the next video.